tradition. without medication. Is that tradition? Is that what the tradition says? Nina ni mumbunda, si muma mbunda mina. Nina ni mumbunda. But we don't allow that. You can't keep children against their parents' will. You have no authority to come and put this. Keep cancel land here. Mama vita mo. Muvero nana mama vita. Catch Amazing Minds Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 20 hours Central African time on YouTube, Google, Apple, and Spotify for podcasters. Zambia's first late night show. Tabesha. <laughs> ah, that's powerful. Tabesha, tabesha. <laughs> I like this to Mabemba expressions. At Chibi Sana, it's okay. a door too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how are you doing, sir? Ah, I'm a blessed young man. A bit sad about the assassination attempt of Mr. Donald Trump. You're sad about uh, it? Why? Uh, it's just... They missed. No, You're sad that they missed. I'm happy that they they, they missed. Ah. I'm, I'm sad that his life almost went. <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh. He just turned mm. to look at the slide. Mm. Ah, intervention. Eh? Isn't God good? Speaking of which, Bible talks every Friday. Ah, whatever this pleases. <laughs> <laughs> and the show is moving 22 hours now. We have Monday's show, which is the political segment of the show, which ideally should air on Monday, but due to time of trouble, we are airing it Monday or any other day. And we have Bible talks, which ideally airs on Fridays. So as I told you guys in our last show, we have been uh, airing the show at 20 hours Central African time, but we're moving it to 22 hours Central African time, which is the late night show, the YouTube version of the show. But the podcast will be made available to you earlier, which is 20 hours Central African time. And the link will be in the description. So if you would like to listen to the podcast from now going forward, then you'll be able to catch it in the um in the description i will make mention also that you will not be able to uh access from monday show number one uh, number two the earlier shows are gone let us forget about them let us begin afresh reason being the podcast platforms that we were hosting them on have closed yeah how are you doing sir did i greet you yeah. Oh, yeah. You like <laughs> Why? Yeah, you really love. It. You know when we're growing up in our house. Oh, morning, Dad. Oh, morning. How are you? Oh, hey. Oh, Dad. Dad, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. How are you? Oh, morning. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, <clears throat> so you spoke about uh, Donald Trump. Yes. And uh, I, I realized we kept on saying they, 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 they missed. They, oh, but, um, they, I thought it was one person. All I can say is a week prior, Joe mm. Biden talked about putting Biden, uh, Trump in the bullseye. In the bullseye. Oh, though, yeah, those are um, politics. Oh. I know, those are politics yeah. now. But it's also But possible. also, mm. on the call, uh, Mr. Biden's call to Mr. Trump, mm -hmm. he asked, what made you look at the slides? Well, no, I didn't hear the call. Oh, yeah, he, he asked. Oh, I know a, that they had a call, but... Uh, there's a transcript. Oh, there's a transcript? Mm. Or he asked about why what, did you look at what this? made you look at the slide? <laughs> really? 
Yeah, but also yeah. you know there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of flaws in their security system, right? Ah, too much. There's too much. Too much. Too much. Mm. Too much. For starters, let's not talk about the building that they left unmanned, where the guy was it unmanned? Yes, it was because um, there was it's it's got it was in the direct line of. There were uh, people in the building, law enforcement. No, but, but there was supposed the the, yeah, there was supposed to be someone on top mm-hmm. because it's in the direct. Mm. Uh, well, the Secret Service says they could they they, they couldn't yeah? send someone on top because the the roof was slanting, which is very funny because the sniper who took that guy out was on a roof. A, that a slanting, was slanting roof, yeah. exactly. It was actually more. <laughs> it was worse, yeah. Slanting, yeah, true. And yeah. Uh, he also took sixty minutes to shoot him. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but also law enforcement knew about that guy like uh, an hour before. Yeah, because people were telling them, right? Or maybe they also no, knew. No, actually, they, they they knew because he came and he was looking suspicious. He came to the those things that they used to check if you have metals or a weapon, mm-hmm. magnetometer or something like that. When he came mm-hmm. there, he had the a range range something. Kama using a kajo, like mostly for for hunting. Oh, okay. Yeah, but sometimes even like measuring, it's used to measure a distance. Okay, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, yeah so yeah, he yeah. had that thing, mm. and then law enforcement was made aware. So there's a guy, a suspicious guy, who has this. Who created a device? Uh-huh. That was mm. like one hour before. He was ah, um, in the venue in other. Um, 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 guys. Yeah, and then when he got on the roof, uh, they knew about it like two minutes before he took the shot. Yeah, because people were actually video. Yes. Recording him. Yeah. Like there is a guy on the roof and they were like, oh, really? Yeah. yeah more guys. Yeah. So there are questions to say, why, why wasn't, why was Trump still speaking for another two minutes? Yeah. And guess who's, there was a threat. And guess whose secret service they are? Whose secret service are they? Biden. Are they? Yeah. No, they're Trump's. No, they are Biden's secret service given to Trump. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. I thought they were just, uh, I thought secret it's, service. It's like in, it's secret like in. Secret service for the state. Yeah, but they they are it's who is leading the government at the time. Mm-hmm. It's like uh in Zambia. He, he's the president. The the president is the commander in chief of the armed forces. Mm-hmm. So even if a former head of state has got police protection, mm-hmm. they are still um uh, the president's police. Okay. Yeah, it's hard for me to look at them comparatively anyway. Yeah. <laughs> no, I with their behavior, have, with the way the they whole, did yeah, with, the, the, with the way they handled the whole thing, uh we can compare. Well, yeah, America is becoming skills, Africa. Yeah, <laughs> different skills. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, of course, it looks like uh, uh, they saw the threat coming and they let it be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were sleepy like Joe. <laughs> yeah, but also <laughs> the way they handled it after the shot, after the shots, I think it was premier. Yeah, yeah. They allowed him to just take the iconic photo and then <laughs> took him into the car. <laughs> Some people were suspecting that maybe it was planned, that maybe Mr. Trump orchestrated the whole thing. Uh, oh, that's hard. Yeah, that's hard. Uh, I am going to turn my head at the last minute so you can shoot my ear. That one is almost improbable. Unless they are saying that the, the bullet wasn't that close and then they used something to just cut him. Maybe those secret service who came in. They were invisible guys in full view of everyone because Mr. Trump held his ear and there was blood before the secret service came. So unless yeah. there was like a spiritual uh-huh. secret service that yeah, came to cut his ear. You can, you can get <laughs> blood from a lot of places. It, it doesn't have to be real blood. Yeah? Yeah. Anyway, there are a lot of theories. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it, personally, also, I believe uh, mm. it was a bullet that grazed him. I mm, believe in what mm. you said, divine intervention. Mm. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, Bible talks. We do Bible talks every Friday. Aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, catch Bible talks every Friday right here. I come. Oh, not. Sometimes it can be a Thursday, a Saturday, a Sunday. Mm. Yeah, but every week, Mzaipe is a Bible talks with. Uh, my brother, Bahatrium Dan. Aha, uh-huh, aha. <laughs> uh-huh. That's right. <laughs> Was, hmm? Yeah, nothing. <laughs> no, 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 go on. <laughs> Before I call you that name. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I want us to keep these things in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, we have a lot of things to discuss. By the way, thank you guys for every view you gave us on the last show. Uh, every like, every comment, every we appreciate. And every new subscriber. We had a number of subs- subscribers that came after our last show. Thank you so much. You're welcome to Amazing Minds Zambia's first late night show. Make sure you've hit the bell so that you're notified whenever we upload content. That statement alone, notified whenever we upload content, is mm-hmm. so hard for me to say. It's like a tongue twister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so on the show today, we have a number of things we're discussing. Uh, a lot happened last week. 
it was actually very interesting looking through everything that happened and finally coming up with what we discussed today. Uh, to begin with, we'll discuss the 48 boys that were retrieved from the Mukanda ceremony in Livingstone. This is a story and a half. Mm. Um, corruption in the UPND government is being laid bare, no news there. No, that's the story and a half. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then uh, on a sad note, uh, across the country, some sad incidences have been happening. Uh, Kitwe man sets his house on fire, killing a grandchild as a Lusaka man is crushed to death. And lastly, we discuss the Ministry of Health, Egyptian drug scandal. Yeah. Are you ready for the show? I was born ready. Ah, mm. are you ready for the show? <laughs> 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 I love your response. I had to ask it twice. <laughs> I was born ready, bro. <laughs> yeah, so Livingstone authorities raid illegal Mukanda ceremony rescuing 48 uh, boys. This is an interesting story. By the way, if you don't know what the Mukanda is, the Mukanda involves the circumcision of the initiates. Uh, tests of courage and lessons on their future role as men and husbands. Each initiate is assigned a specific must character, which remains with him throughout the entire process. The Mkanda is also a profound annual initiation ritual designed for young boys between the ages of eight and 12. This rite of passage, celebrated by the Luvale, Chokwe, Luchazi, and Mbunda peoples, serve as a symbolic and transformative journey as the boys travel from childhood to adulthood. So, um, that basically is what the Mkanda is. It's considered a traditional, a traditional ceremony, but the wherewithal of the whole ceremony, how it's done, how it's conducted, has called for very serious um, questions from the authorities. And therefore they have called it an illegal ceremony altogether, uh, which of course has not sat well with the chiefs of the Said um, tribes. Did you ever have individuals that went from the Kanda when you were young friends we had rumors i can't tell for sure you can't tell for sure yeah do you ever have someone who just disappeared <laughs> <laughs> i can't really remember because apparently these guys are just being kidnapped uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh i have a lot to say about it by the way you have a lot to say yeah, about so it. the traditional ceremony the way it's done itself kidnapping is part of the ritual okay yeah uh, I know there, there could be some bad elements uh, because also we know that this was pre this is predominantly in northwestern province. Mm. Uh, this is the first time actually I'm hearing that it's happening in uh, Livingston. So the, the, the ceremony itself involves uh, uh, some sort of kidnapping. Yeah. Because what happens is that these boys are taken to go and stand in front of elders mm. and then they start insulting the elders. Oh, really? Yes, it's part of the ceremony. Oh. After okay. they insult them, this is interesting. the elders are infuriated. Can you guys bring me a popcorn for this? <laughs> <laughs> the elders are infuriated, and then they start uh, pursuing them. Until okay. they catch them, they, okay. they put them in these camps. And then there's also mm. a part, there's also a part where these people are taken out, and then their parents are made to come and pretend like they're trying to claim them. Really? Yes. And then these boys are forcibly taken away. I don't understand. Explain the last part. So uh, after the, I don't know if it's two weeks or three weeks, I don't know, I need to get my information right. Mm -hmm. So the first part, first of all, when they, you've gotten the first part, right? Yes. Yeah. So the second part, now they've been there for like two to three weeks. Mm. They are now going through another stage. Mm. Before they go through the other stage, they call their parents to come and want to pretend like they want to claim them back. Like I don't want- But were the parents aware of the kidnapping, the- of the children going to the ceremony to begin with. Yes. Because from the way the government officials are mm -hmm. speaking, mm -hmm. it's as if the parents are the ones complaining, saying our children are being taken forcefully without our knowledge. Mm -hmm. So, okay, as I'm saying, mm -hmm. uh, in this case, it could be different. As okay. I'm saying, okay. it's Okay, so you're talking here. about the, talking about the how it should be how, done. How it's done. Okay, okay. Exactly, yeah. Okay. How I thought it was, it's done. Okay. Yeah. Because this ceremony has been there since time immemorial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, anyway, for, for argument's sake, mm. you're right, because even the lady here did talk about how mm. this is not how it was done mm -hmm. when she was complaining to one of the. Yeah. 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 So maybe in this instance, what happened in Livingstone, maybe there were a lot of uh, bad stuff that happened. Mm. Maybe the kidnapping these days is not the, the, the kind of kidnapping where parents know that they're just doing this for sure. It's part of the ceremony. Maybe they are actually kidnapping them. Mm. Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe things have changed. Uh, you said so when the parents try to claim them back, mm -hmm. what happens after that? 
the the boys are taken okay yeah like forcibly okay yeah mm. That's interesting. Then the climax of the event is the circumcision itself. I don't know if it's a climax, but circumcision is part of yeah, it's part of it. Okay. I think it's part, it's it's one of the main things actually. Okay. Yeah. And the said circumcision has led to a few health complications for some of the boys. Mm -hmm. Um we are also told that some of the boys were on ARVs but were not mm -hmm. afforded this medication during this whole process. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. and I think that that shouldn't be done. Yeah. And if we have a traditional ceremony that we have to conduct, we need to now take into account these things. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So but of course there was just for record purposes I think it was one boy who was an NIA, who was an air visa. Eh? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, according to the statement that yeah. got. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um let us look at the government officials as they read this uh ceremony. To keep children tradition. without medication. Is that tradition? Is that what the tradition says? But we don't allow that. You can't keep children against their parents' will. You have no authority to come and put this. Keep cancel land here. Mama vita mo. In the name of tradition, you are diluting tradition. This is not what, what, what we grew up with. This is against the law. No sanitation, no water. My toilet, mom, is it full of my elephant in my buffalo? I got an elephant, I can't get up with it. It's up with it. It's up with it. It's up with it. It's up yeah, that is uh, Mainga Kabika, the Permanent Secretary, uh, Gender Division Office of the Vice President, uh, young lady teaching an old man on tradition. Strange. Yeah, uh, even myself, I wasn't happy with that. Yeah, yeah because she looked like she would slap him. Did you see that? Like uh, you, you are spoiling. <laughs> yeah, so the way she was speaking to him, as you are saying, yes, I didn't like that. But also uh, for, for the people who've been practicing this traditional ceremony, women are not supposed to be in this place. Mm, mm. We have our traditions. Yeah, yeah. We have yeah. traditions where it's only for women. Yes, Men yes, are not yes, supposed and... to step foot there. Exactly. Yeah. So they went against that in this case. Yeah. Yeah. And also they say uncircumcised men are not supposed to be there. Of course, there's no way of knowing. Mm. But for her, at least we see that she's a woman. Mm -hmm. She wasn't <laughs> supposed to be there. So even if they were doing something. Oh, more, uncircumcised men are not supposed to be there. No. As well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So even if we we saw that they are doing something wrong, I don't agree that you could take someone who is on ARVs without medication yeah i don't agree to take anyone who's the, who's got a health complication yeah but and they then, also the, the report says that the complications arose from the circumcisions no uh the hiv no no no, no. Oh, so we have the other complications yes oh yes uh, yes yes i yeah, agree yeah yeah i totally agree yeah so as you, you see the it's like there is also, uh, given what she was complaining about as well, mm -hmm. the permanent secretary, mm -hmm. uh, there is unsanitary conditions. There is no proper medication for the individuals that are going through this medical procedure. Mm -hmm. What should be a medical procedure? Mm -hmm. So we don't know how well they are healing. We don't know whether there are infections that are being developed. Mm -hmm. uh, we do accept tradition. I, I guess it's a, to be fair, they do have a point. Um, there is a, a lot of stuff that is not being done right about this. Uh, we're also told that some boys were badly injured who are in hospital right now because they tried to run away and some of the older boys followed after them and beat them up, uh, which all together, uh, does not augur well. I don't know whether the purpose of this also is to kind of send back home children that have injuries, whether that's part of the tradition. I don't know, but I think it should be there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if it's not there, then those are. You see, I don't. I don't agree that we should get rid of the traditional ceremony in a whole, uh, as as a whole. Mm. I don't think that will happen anyway. Mm. Yeah. But I believe that uh, we are living in modern society, so there are things that we need to put in place. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, as I'm saying, oh, yeah, the yeah, person yeah. who was on antiretroviral treatment, that is a lifelong thing. Mm. Yeah. And uh, you see, someone's life depends on that. Mm. So we need to know that in such a circumstance, we need to make sure that they take their ARVs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so uh, let's listen to some uh, direct comments from the Permanent Secretary, Miss, Mrs. Mainga Kabika. Then in, in the Mukanda here, we found out that uh, some of the children 
uh, there's one child who's on uh, um, ARVs and was being kept in here without medication. And the parents were crying to say that our child is on ARVs and uh, the child is not receiving medication. And then we found another one who has Bilhazia. So this, the, the other child is having urine, I mean, blood in the urine. Um, so this child is in hospital as we speak. The other children were complaining of chest pains. Others were beaten badly because they were trying to escape at night and they were caught in the, in the bush uh, while they tried to escape. So the bigger boys went and caught them, brought them back and they beat them up. Yeah, so she does have a point. Also, uh, apparently they did not get council permission, uh, which the Mbunda Roy establishment does not agree to saying, since when did this ceremony need a permit? Uh, which statement will show you shortly, right after uh, the say gentleman who was being rebuked statement. One of the organizers. One of the organizers. Yeah, he made a statement on the same issue, so you can check it out. <laughs> But Pamina will not party low. None is in a can, and I will mail. But yes, she should take it so. That's why I lay low. Welcome back to Mkanda. We will see you. Yes. Yeah, the man does look like he beats up boys. <laughs> but he looks remorseful. But <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just a person. Uh, me, they, they, if they say the ceremony is wrong, then. But this is an awkward Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a comedy show, guys. Please do subscribe, hit the bell, and share. <laughs> I'm not thinking about my ears. Hey. Wakuru wakuru. Oh, as in wakuru wakuru. <laughs> ah, serious? I'm kind of serious. Hey, 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 <laughs> no, but we are covered by the blood. Hallelujah. You go and damper in the several rooms. You don't say. What happened? You stopped the show. Hey. Uh, crazy. <laughs> so the Mbunda Roy establishment did release a press statement on the said uh, issue. Following media reports that a joint operation by the Zambia Police Service and the Gender Division of the Office of the President, I believe this should be the Office of the Vice President, mm -hmm. rescued 48 boys from an illegal Mukanda, circ Mukanda circumcision camp in Livingston, the Mbunda Roy establishment called for an emergency meeting of senior Mbunda traditionalists in Kaoma district to interrogate the media report. The meeting vehemently condemned the conduct of the government institution involved in the blatant undressing of the sacred culture and tradition of a bona fide section of its society. All right, so basically they were condemning the actions, the approach that the government had towards this. Uh, they burnt down the camp. They also said that these people needed to have a permit before they could uh, use the said location because it's council land. And they also called the ceremony illegal. And they generally undressed the sacred, sacred ceremony of what the Mbundaro establishment uh, cause the largest population of the Western province. I don't know how true that is, but that's what they said. Yeah, so uh, this is what the Mbunda Royal Establishment said. I don't know uh, your stance on the said issue. Do you think they had a point? Well, yeah, and I think I've said everything that I had to say. Yeah, they had yeah. a point. They, they did. They had a point. So you and think also, that, this is their role. You think that yes. the, the, the approach should have been a bit <clears throat> yes, more respectful? Should have been better. I'm not saying that we shouldn't have regulations, hmm. but the approach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we should have known what we can do and what we cannot do. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. And uh, and also, you see, this is a traditional establishment. So I mean, the Mbundare establishment. So their statement, you expect them to defend the the tradition. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah that's so it true. Is also that's their true. Duty. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. And um, the issue was brought before the speaker in parliament, uh, questioning whether this is this indefinite ban on the said ceremony was indeed uh, indefinite or there was some kind of, whether we are going to see Mkanda again, basically. Take a look. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, not too long ago, just about the day, uh, the PS Gender Division in Livingston stated that uh, the Mkanda traditional practice has been banned. And this has been, of course, a practice that has been going on for ages, not only in Livingston, but also in Northwestern Province, 
and we do understand the benefit of uh, male circumcision from the medical point of view. It reduces STIs and HIV transmission. It also helps to prevent the transmission of human papilloma virus, which causes cervical cancer. And uh, Madam Speaker, not only that, the, that tradition also enhances certain uh, traditions or uh, lessons that help the males as they grow of age on how to keep their families and so on and so forth. So, is the PS gender division in order just to come and say this practice has been banned? Is it the practice or the bad elements in it? Because the bad elements have been abduction of children, people's children without their parents' consent, keeping them in the camps for up to six months, and of course asking for sums of money if the children have to be released. Madam Speaker, it, this has caused apprehension, not only in Livingstone, but countrywide, including Northwestern. I direct this matter to the leader of government business to state the government position, whether this Mukanda practice has been banned to the exclusion of its benefit, or is it the other elements which are bad in it that have been banned. Madam Speaker, I seek your indulgence in this matter. Thank you. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, for me, if indeed this medical procedure is the purpose for it, that uh, we are trying to reduce HPV, the human papilloma virus, and we're also trying to reduce the chances of women getting cervical cancers, therefore we want boys to be circumcised, why can't you engage hospitals to help if that is really the aim and not do it uh, in such brutal ways that it will, it will cause complications. Mm. Uh, That's a good way of looking at it. Yeah, yeah because, because, because they can be conjunction. Yes, we yeah. can have the Mukanda ceremony and then have surgical processes. Yes, a yeah. camp, they can set up a tent yeah. with uh, some nurses and... Uh, yes. Yeah, then uh, secondly, I like how proudly he's talking about the kidnapping. Like it's a normal thing. It's not. No, but he said bad elements. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, he did say bad, bad elements. But if they... Yeah, but he, of course he said it like it's a like practice it's the that core. has been happening. Yeah, yeah, like it's the core of the whole ceremony yeah. to kidnap. And and I think it's owing to the fact that you mentioned it yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, well, in, it's indeed part of it. We should, they should rather consider changing that part of the ceremony then, uh, given that parents 50 years ago probably had a different approach to their kids being taken without their permission than the parents today have. Mm -hmm. Because maybe the world was more peaceful then, I don't know. <laughs> now when someone is missing for two days, you think the worst. Yeah, and also you see, he, sp he speaks about circumcision, forgetting the, pro the, the, the procedure, the mm. way it's been done at Mukan. Yeah. We heard that one of them is HIV positive. Yeah, oh, oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. How, yeah. Are they, how are they doing the circumcision? Yeah, because we, you know we've, that, that we've heard that crazy yeah. stories about it. I don't know how true it is. Anyway, we we we, we don't know. There are no videos of the said mm. ceremony. Uh, yeah, of course, <laughs> <laughs> but we hear there's a panga involved. Uh, I don't know how true it is. Anyway, yeah, it's a, it's a possibility. I mean, yeah, it's a how possibility. Today, yeah? <laughs> or maybe it's not really a panga, but. Uh, uh, I'm sure it's unpleasant. I just hope yeah. it's not the same tool they use for multiple boys. Yeah, we can only hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we can only hope and we can only hope. Yeah. A, a man in Kitwe is on the run for allegedly setting ablaze his house along with nine other family members, including a grandchild and his former wife. Uh, this uh, gentleman had a divorce recently in June 2024 with his wife. Uh, and the court ruled that the shops that they had, the properties they had should be sold and divided equally between the wife and the husband. But they were still staying together because they were looking for people to buy the house. And uh, what eventually happened is the man petitioned the court and the date was set for, I believe, uh, 20th, 30th July. Uh, but as of 11th July, or was it 14th July? As of 11th July, the woman received rentals from the shops and used the money, which infuriated the man and caused him to burn the house, uh, along with his kids, grandchildren, and uh, his former wife. His grandchild, unfortunately, passed away, and the rest of the family members are admitted to the hospital. The man is on the run. 
And this is a sad occurrence. Yeah, yeah, it is very sad. And thank you very much for that elaborate explanation. Maybe I can just add on to say. Yeah, please. Maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe I can just add on one part to say maybe by the time people are seeing this, the man would have been found. So he was on the run at the time of reporting. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes. That's 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 good to mention. Yeah. So that's sad news from Kitwe. And in the same breath, we have a story from Foxdale area. Uh, a young man has been crushed by a block mixing machine. The story is that the gentleman went into the machine to clean it because power had gone and he took advantage of that time to clean the machine. But then they did not know, he did not know that the machine was left on uh, at the time power was going. So while he was inside, power was restored. Yeah, very and, uh, is it, are they supposed to say block mixing machine? Um, I don't, I'm not aware. I think it's supposed to be block making. Yeah, yeah I think or, it's supposed to be. Or, or concrete mixing. Or concrete, mi oh, yeah. concrete mixing, eh? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, now I have a picture of what the machine looks like. Oh, yeah, I saw it myself. Yeah? Mm. Are there pictures here? Mm, we, I don't know. You guys, maybe you guys have some? Report, maybe. Okay, you just send that to me. Yeah, so um, he passed away. This is sad. This is unfortunate. Uh, we don't know whether the owners of the business knew that the machine was on. This is what the family is now questioning. Do they know? Uh, they are saying the owners of the business have killed him because they knew that the machine was on, but they still asked him to go inside, which is not really what the police report is telling us as per se. But yeah, what do you think about the, the, the whole thing? Do you think it was something that you can blame uh, the business owners for? Yeah, no, I'm blaming Zesco. <laughs> 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 without not shedding, this would have happened. <laughs> to be honest, without not shedding, this wouldn't have happened. And we are hoping we don't see such accidents mm -hmm. on the rise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important because Zesco always says that, uh, which defeats the purpose of me blaming them, but I'll still yeah. say it. They they always say that treats all lines mm -hmm. as uh, uh, live. live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that this also calls to precaution. Like if you if you are if you are going to enter such a machine to clean it. <laughs> you should as well make sure whether could my light or could my light make sure that you Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. That's yeah. true. Uh, so some statements from the family. So if as a family, down a buti, nichefe, nichefe, jamene, stinga, stiza kuzana, stiza kuzana na, chifuka ife na ruzawatu, stiza kwani sa kumuta lichani repressi, timpese po footi, kwasira. So if enge tenda ora ya chame tenda ora as a family. That's why the company, the company cool, queen, queen, the mini, a Afungana, Malamoro, Sanga, who's around to put in Dan Casavense, Malatia, and then who's searching out, so searching out on good, off good. I see a Malatia Jani, Yari, own, to machine she own, or Malatia and I but machine she own, then in Dan Gakirin. So, to stand out of any way to mention that. The grandmother has been left traumatized with the death of her grandson. So, Tirida, what do you want? What is here? Panopanumba. Sana is Samadi, the old Viva Meneva Javeneva Company. When Zozi were good, she's Jenny Chimalitis Vanazim. But what in Gamana Tingena Ukirini? So, what do you want? What do you want? So, Tipempa Boma could take a concert, could he have a Meneva Company? Va Company. Va Fabantu. Yeah, so that's the family. Uh, of course, we do know they're emotional over the loss of their loved one. And they may be speaking on that basis when they blame the owners of the company for not having switched off the, the power or being aware before they asked him to go inside. I don't think it appears to be an accident to me, but maybe they know something we don't know. Yeah, but also they need to be emotional. They need to blame someone. And maybe also yeah, let's blame Zesco. some compensation. Yeah, yeah Zesco. Zesco. Oh, speaking of Zesco, Minister of Energy has been transferred to the oh, yeah. Ministry of Fisheries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Round of applause. Perhaps you'll do something with fish. <laughs> Don't be too hard. Don't be too hard. Ah, I didn't really like his response about uh, uh, what the plan is. Oh, that, oh, no, we are just going to rush on until we wait for... We, what we are going to provide the country is Lord Man management yeah. until we can get the next rainfall <laughs> yeah his movement has been uh, long overdue and welcomed with glad hats yeah, yeah. Look of course at uh, i don't know much about the new person mr makoza chikote yeah yeah i don't know much about him 
Yeah, so we're, we're waiting, we're yet to see. Mr. Makozo Chikote. Yeah, we're yeah. yet to see. Interesting name, eh? We need to do a segment on mm. giving superheroes Zambian names. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like do, you, do you watch Marvel movies? Marvel movies? Is Spider-Man a Marvel movie? Yeah. Yeah, I, I watch Spider-Man. Like, imagine Spider-Man with a Zambian surname or Thor with a Zambian <laughs> surname, Kalokoni Thor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, I guess Zesco is to blame for the death of the young man. And we don't know if <laughs> they will get... Eh? <laughs> yeah, we're blaming Zesco. We, we don't know if they will get any form of compensation for it. As, we as hope they, they want. do, I mean. Yeah. yeah. So it was a young man uh, probably bringing something home. Maybe breadwinner. I don't know. Yeah, we can know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In other news, uh, drama ensues with the ACC as we got the FIC report last week and a few revelations on misspendings, misdoings, misgivings, misdealings, mm -hmm. uh, corruption, money laundering, use of public vehicles to facilitate for this aid laundering. The ACC DG has also landed in some serious issues mm, who, uh, is now the former DG? <laughs> who is now the former dg mm. um uh, mr trevor shama shamakamba tom is that his first name tom yeah uh i don't know why they put trevor there this is the first time i'm hearing this name so, uh, so his name know. is tom Sha. yeah tom tom Shamak Shamak mm. is it tom like t-o-m or t-h oh i don't know <laughs> i don't know i see some spelling saying t-o-m yeah Shamakamba. so yeah yeah, anyway. I've never really I don't want to use the word like because like it's it's I'm indifferent about him. I was indifferent. Yeah. yeah but I, I never he never really had that punch, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh because this guy came up after uh, ACC. Who was at ACC before him? Oh, after the guy who's the current director of public prosecution, mm. Gilbert Peary. Yeah. So after Oh he, Gilbert Peary was ACC. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And just you know, I must I must mention that uh, first of all, he's uh, you shown you've shown that uh, that front page of the Daily Revelation. Yeah. So that's where the story came from. That set this all up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, it could have something to do with the FIC, as you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, the 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 report was not necessarily about the FIC, but he just documented how the ACC or the UPND government has been failing in the corruption fight. Mm. And he mentioned that because there's a problem at ACC, even the people at ACC are corrupt themselves. Mm. So he also mentioned, uh, uh, I think he mentioned... Uh, this was the same Mr. Mr. Tom Shamakamba is the one who said these things? No. So the one who did the article is a man called O'Brien Carver. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I okay. think he should be Professor or Dr. O'Brien Okay. Carver. I, get, yeah. I get what you're saying. Okay. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, he was actually a commissioner on the on the board of the SEC. Mm. Yeah, but also the SEC, as we are going to see, was dissolved. The, the board itself was yeah. dissolved. Yeah. So he's the one who made these revelations. And apparently, in that article of Monday, uh, this past Monday, mm. in that same article, he mentions to say, uh, he wrote another article a few days prior to this article that we're talking about, mm. where he, made, he sort of uh, spoke about the SEC leadership. And now in this article that he wrote, he specifically mentioned to say this gentleman, Paul Sh uh, Tom Shamakamba, mm -hmm. called him to threaten him. Okay. So you can imagine a director general calling a board member. To threaten threatening them. Ah, That's the amount of the, rot. Is it the board member in a superior place? It's supposed to be like that. But ah. of course, board members are not employees. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so they are not directly involved in the, member, exactly. in the management. Yeah, yeah. So this guy, uh, to a great extent, the director general has got more power. Mm -hmm. He's the one who's handling the situations. He's the one who's handling the monies. Mm. Yeah. So the man made a lot of revelations, actually, which tells me something that we've already known for a long time. Yeah. And that, we, we could also assume that this Mr. Tom mm -hmm. could be under investigation. He should be under investigation. Mm, because fact, Mr. Muetua hinted at it, right? When he said, because he was addressing the fact that the president accepted his which resignation. Which is a non-story. Why, yeah. why was he talking about that? <laughs> he was talking about, he was gloating over it. Talking so about so how about in, the previous government, over in the previous government, people continued working. No, but see, issues. we are three years <laughs> down the line. I don't know why we are still comparing ourselves to the previous government. I know. This is a serious <laughs> Right now, we are learning that the ACC has been corrupt for three years 
that we've thought that they have changed. You know what? Yeah. Just say that slowly. The ACC. The Anti-Corruption Commission, the ACC. Has been Has corrupt. been corrupt. Crazy. The organization that's supposed to fight corruption. Not yeah. only that, uh, O'Brien, uh, Carver, maybe I should call him that, O'Brien yeah. Carver, he, he made revelations to say even the chambers themselves are corrupt. Mm. They've been making, they've been sitting down with citizens for them to be litigants, to sue the state so that they, they come up with constant judgment uh -uh. and didn't make the state pay. Uh, 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 so even the, the chambers The dialies of this world. <laughs> they, they are eating our taxes. I'm, like I'm not saying world. anything, but the dialies of this world. You remember Mr. <laughs> so, Daly was uh, off, was paid in a constant judgment recently. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, I avoided mentioning names because there was no name mentioned in there. Yeah, but no, we've seen it's, these it's, it's purely just connecting one and two. Yes, without you, of course. Pointing, we need to connect one and without two. Without pointing any fingers at anyone. Yes, yes. We need to connect one and two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, for me, it's just sad that I thought, and you know, uh, maybe we should go and I'll, I'll continue talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. And um, Mr. Mwetwa, uh, the said video of Mr. Mwetwa mm. congratulating the president on accepting what, the resignation. He was yes, <laughs> he was gloating because <laughs> the president accepted the resignation of the said DG. Mm. Take a look. Also, like to indicate that uh, the acceptance by the president of the resignation by the director general of the anti-corruption commission is not a strange occurrence it may be deemed strange because it is unprecedented because in the past when citizens have complained about public office holders in various departments that included the Anti-Corruption Commission. We have not seen anyone resign. Instead, we have seen public office holders at the apex of governmental leadership, including ministers, appear before the Anti-Corruption Commission or even appear before the courts of law while they maintain their offices as ministers. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> anti-corruption commission boss has been found wanting. Yeah, and he is coming and standing on an anti to <laughs> praise the president for accepting his resignation. The the resignation of the anti-corruption commission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I mean, a resignation palace somebody on a mungati. Maybe it wasn't even an a resignation. Is in our president to come and you resign. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's actually very possible mm. if for him to come out. Actually, mm. the possibility is huge. For him to have come out like that, mm. to say, ah, no, in the previous government, people, okay, let's use deduct deductive logic here. Mm. If he says in the previous government, people continued working, even though they had issues they were dealing with in the courts or in terms of in investigation, is he trying to say in this government, people don't work when they have issues, <laughs> right? That could be suggesting that it's a stipulation within the government mm -hmm. that you, if you've got issues, just bring your resignation later, we'll accept it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he could be. He could be right. He could be revealing secrets. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, the president has dissolved the anti-corruption commission uh, board. Yeah, maybe that. Sorry. He should have spoken about this one. <laughs> oh yeah, he should have spoken about this one, but he instead decided to gloat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, but also, uh, the, the, the so what I think about the I know you didn't ask me what I think about the the the. Uh, the dissolution of the board. Mm. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't know you did ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of Musa Mwenye. Uh -huh. Musa Mwenye is one of those people I was looking up to. And I was thinking, this is a sober guy. This is mm. a guy who's going to fix things at the ACC. Mm. Musa Mwenye was the, the board chair for those who might not know. I thought this was the guy who was coming to fix things. Because the time that uh, we had the PF in government, he was so loud. And for me, I look at I looked at him as a professional, a legal mind who is uh, ready to use his expertise for the betterment of uh, Zambia. Yeah. Uh, now I didn't know that. Uh, anyway, let's not say much, but uh, it's, it's a disappointment, Musa Mwenye. Yeah, for these other people, I mean, I didn't really look up to them. The Tom Shamakamba. <laughs> so In fact, for Tom Shamakamba. For me, the day that he was appointed, I even looks suspicious. Mm. But for people like Musa Mwenye, it's a huge disappointment, you know. How about uh, Mashom Chende? I didn't know much about this person. Uh, 
But also the SEC have, comp- have confirmed that they're investigating him, right? Yeah, the SEC have investigate have confirmed rather mm. that they're investigating the solicitor solicitor general, mm. Mr. Mchende, under the corruption uh, allegations of under corruption allegations amounting to five hundred thousand US dollars. Mm. Yes. <laughs> That's a lot of money. <laughs> but Marshall Mchende sued the O'Brien cover, isn't it? Yes, he has sued back <laughs> the ACC yeah. for the former so, ACC yes, commissioner. Yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So he sued this gentleman for that article that we spoke about. Uh-huh. The one that was done on Monday. Yeah, yeah. Then now the ACC confirming that they're investigating him. This is another instance after he already sued. Well, after that mm. article came out. Mm. Yeah, so. It's surprising that he sued. You know, the ACC themselves they've agreed. That yeah, it's it's interesting. In, in and they've said they've been investigating him for since last year. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's crazy. This also shows that the problems at the ACC are deep. Are deep. Yeah. There are deep seated issues there. Yeah. Yeah. Very deep seated. You know, it's very <laughs> frustrating. Mm. Yeah. It's uh, demoralizing for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if we have the institution. And HH came on a premise of fighting corruption, zero tolerance. Mm. <laughs> zero tolerance to Do- corruption. Tolerance. <laughs> zero tolerance mm. to corruption. So that this is happening, it's very embarrassing even for the president. It is. And to me, I've always said this, and I'm going to say it again. If the president is serious about this corruption fight, and now I believe maybe it's getting too late. He should have t- declared his assets and liabilities mm. when he came into office. Mm. Then we would have known to say the president is serious about fighting corruption. <laughs> we kept on saying that. Mm. He hasn't done that. Yeah. So to me, he's not serious about corruption. He's been showing a straight face. He's been talking tough, but he's not serious about it. Speaking he, of which, our president is very similar to Trump in those areas, eh? Uh, what in uh, non-declaring of certain financial issues. Trump also, you remember there was a probe for his tax mm-hmm. records for years until they finally laid it all bare. Yeah, but uh, I mean, <laughs> these are different problems. <laughs> the way our president is doing things, it's actually more suspicious. Yeah? Yeah, in my opinion. The president do, should do have Do you suppose there's a reason why? Why what? He doesn't want to declare his assets. Uh, now I would think of a reason, but when he just came into office, I didn't think of any reason. Mm. Now I'm thinking it's too late because mm. uh, HH was, and these are just figures that uh, people have been throwing around. Mm. Before he, was, he came into office, HH was uh, estimated to be worth uh, close to $500 million. Mm. Uh, so if he came out today and said, now I'm worth $2 billion, mm. it's easy for us to say, how did you jump from this to that? Yeah, which also and say- And also it, Akambo Jumpa Jumpa will say, mm. oh, you are benefiting from deals. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. maybe now he's afraid. Maybe he actually made genuine money. Mm. So maybe now he's afraid. He's like, mm, a Zambian's going to believe this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a whole mess, eh? Yeah, he, he, made a, he already made a mistake. And uh, to me, I wouldn't forgive him for that. <laughs> well, in terms of voting. Yeah. There's nothing that he can do for me to go and vote for HH again. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> if I'm looking for someone to fight corruption, because we have a lot yeah, but of in this, But in our case... Mm. Today, who else is there to vote for? Uh, I mean, uh, okay, but I mean, you know, let, we, let me let me correct mm. my statement. By the way, when I say who else is there to vote for, mm. what I'm simply saying and is the ones that are putting themselves up. Uh, yes, the ones that are putting themselves up. It's between we are between a rock and a hard place mm-hmm. now, or is it the devil and the deep blue sea? Mm. Uh, we don't know whether it's it's a, a case of choosing the lesser evil. So what should we do? To, to a large extent, the, that I don't know. That you God, are saying we should choose a lesser evil. Right? Th- that God will have to speak into your heart. I don't know who mm. really, at the end of the day, we don't know who the final mm. contestants will be. Mm, of course. Um, yeah, I agree with what you're saying. I'm trying to drive people away from that school of thought because uh, I've realized that that is that is sort of a tool that a weapon that is being used by those who are in government right now. Mm. They are saying because they've seen that they've failed on many levels. A lot of people are complaining everywhere. The cost of living, blah, blah, blah. And now the corruption, that should have been a low-hanging fruit for them. Mm-hmm. Everything is just uh, going... Yeah. <laughs> so now they know and they will see these things because... Mm. So now they've started using that as a weapon to say, ah, but okay... HHS, but do you have opposition? 
Mwili pia opposition. So ah, <laughs> you're right actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a very serious weapon they are using like yeah. ah, so I've, no. I've noticed that they We, it we so know right now uh-huh. the things are not right but you have no choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we have more than 24 <laughs> months to the elections. Uh for me I would like someone who is not really who has never really been involved in this uh politics as we know it. Mm. That that is hard to come by, of course. Yeah, yeah. Because also the people, because we have a lot of brilliant people mm. in, here in Zambia, mm. but most of those people keep away from politics because they are so brilliant and politics is so dead. Yeah, yeah. And so, politics as a way of reducing someone's brilliance, eh? exactly. Just bringing them down to that level, like. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's what, move on to more corruption was, issues. There was there was a way that there is this statement. I don't want to repeat it, but. Mm. Uh, where where HH was before he became president, where he said, Ah, Zambia. Mm-hmm. Do you remember it? Uh, he insulted before that. Uh, so I always liked the way he ended the statement. He was like, oh. Ah, now <laughs> Zambia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very close to saying it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Quickly. <laughs> I'm eating the same. In other corruption I'm, issues. Nah, I'm to <laughs> <of it>. Zambia. <laughs> yeah, so guys, if you like what you're seeing, smash those buttons, the like button, subscribe, and make sure that you ping that notification bell. You'll find us here every week. We'll give you two shows. The Monday yeah. show and the catch my brother with Bible talks. And be uplifted. Your souls be uplifted. Yeah, that's right. Amen. That 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 is right. You know the drill. <laughs> In more corruption issues, uh, MOH <laughs> discovers missing drugs. Sixty-one containers of medicine and medical supplies. The loot, guys. <laughs> the UPN were government. discovered in a private facility in Makeni. These containers, the sixteen containers, were delivered to Zamsa Central Warehouse as per the contract, but apparently they were not offloaded and instead the transporter was directed to take them to a private depot in Makeni called J&J. These 16 containers contained IV fluids and syringes. (laughs) J&J. JJ. Oh, and she said 16. There are 61. Hey, madam, not to continue. This is a flow of parliament. So, most of Pangamungati, you are misquoting figures. This is 61. Exactly. So, 16 and 61 are different. They're very, yeah. very different. Yes. There are some very. sections of media where I read that this is worth, anyway, I'll say it afterwards. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Zamsa, Director General, uh, Mr. Nyasulu, has been suspended. A lot of suspensions and uh, resignations, and there's like people just dropping off their seats. Yeah, it's, uh, the, the corruption has been laid bare. You said it oh. right. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. And so there's. So, yeah, yeah, I should just mention that that guy, uh, you said what, Nyasulu? Uh, he's a Director General. The name is just Nyasulu here. Yeah, I don't Victor know what Nyasulu. Oh, Victor Nyasulu. Victor yeah. Nyasulu. Yeah. This, this person was director general at Zamsa. For some people who might not know what Zamsa is, this is a uh, Zambia Medicines and Medical Supplies uh, Agency, hmm. which is formerly medical supplies, uh, medical stores or something like that. Oh, yeah. oh, this is what they used to call medical stores? Yes. Oh, okay. This is what they call, what used to be called medical stores. Hmm. Yeah. So these are in charge of procurement and storage hmm. of the medicine hmm. for the country on behalf of the government. So this guy, who was the director general, this was a person who is a UPND member that we know. Mm. So this is why we keep on warning about getting people from political structures, which I yeah, just, yeah, you yeah. know, the way, way like Kada, some people might dislike it, but uh, this- He's a Kada. He's in a UPND, he's in the UP, he's part of the UPND Kada. Mm-hmm. Because he stood for mayor. In fact, uh, if you guys have got that picture of uh, him uh, during the campaigns, you can put it up. Mm-hmm. But this is a person who stood for mayor under the UPND ticket. So you are getting people who are political parties, sympathizers, supporters, CADA, as you are calling them, yeah. and then putting them in such sensitive positions. Oh, but I, hey, oh, what of do you course, expect? but I, no, they will steal. What do you expect? No stealing, they will steal. Yeah. 61 <laughs> containers, uh, which uh, have stayed for now a very long time, eight months. We can no yes. longer use them as, uh, um, what's this? Uh, what's what's this? Chirima. Uh, as Prophet Chidima. Uh, <laughs> Say so <laughs> yeah, I, I call him prophet because he says no. This is just the beginning. You you, oh, you are yet okay, to see. Okay. You, are, you are yet to see what's about to come. So <laughs> prophet Sichirima here tells us how bad the situation is. Ladies and gentlemen, prophet Sichirima.
talked, we spent time arguing, we wrote to Minister of Health explaining we advised the team that went to Egypt that look, this particular process can't work. We spoke about the potential challenges and what you are seeing now could be just a snippet of what is to come. Just as we are owning now that these things were there for eight months, you don't know what they have become. And if by any chance some of them have already been affected, the outcome of that effect may not be detected now by Zamra. There is no way of knowing the effective shelf life of these particular commodities. It is assumed. Yeah, uh, maybe now I should mention my point to say some sections of the media have been saying this, these medicines and medical supplies are worth $60 million. Oh, so as sixty million dollars. Yes. So as Professor Chidima oh, is saying, oh, that would have been two solar power yeah, exactly. plants. Yeah. As Professor Chidima is saying, uh -huh. these are medicines that you probably <laughs> cannot, cannot cannot use immediately. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. They cannot. Uh, it is assumed they, they, cannot, they could be damaged. They yes, could be. Yeah, they've stayed the for too long. The of it now has been questioned. Yeah, and then so, who be, who will be to blame? The prophet uh, when he sells it. <laughs> no, <I don't> think <laughs> so. But my point is that we are potentially about to lose sixty million dollars yeah. for nothing. Yeah. Because people were selfish. Yeah. So you see, these are the same medicines. You basically at Palace, they come from there and they end up in people's uh, pharmacies. Mm, that's true, honeybee yes. and whatnot. Exactly. Mm. People are taking medication that is questionable. That has been stored in a container. This for eight this months. ministry has really suffered. We need the minister of. We need branch two. Where is branch two? <laughs> Bring back branch two. <laughs> uh, I think we should just. Uh, I think the UP India as a whole just, ah, just get rid of them. I tell because you. I think that what we need now is getting rid of our system. I think at this point we might vote. We might vote Pankoroko. The hour <laughs> has come. <laughs> yeah. So we have surprisingly come to the end of the show. Surprisingly, surprising, surprise, surprise, uh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know we'll end, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, in ending the show, we are shocked with this video we are about to show you of uh, PF. Sorry, MM ish. This was this is so MMD so PF. UPND. <laughs> I hear you, brother. I sympathize with you. I feel you. I know. Yeah. UPND uh, officials bowing to military officials and military officials saluting mm -hmm. UPND officials. Yeah. Um, which is. Uh, you, so our soldiers are now saluting uh, party officials. Can you yeah, imagine? This is William Banda. He is the, uh, he's the assistant for the president in the UPND government, mm -hmm. in the UPND mm -hmm. party for mm -hmm. special duties. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's what they call him, something like that. The president's assistant for special duty. Mm, you know, one of these fancy... Uh, yeah. Ah. But, but he doesn't have any government uh, position. Yeah. And even if he had government position, a government position... This is still inappropriate. Yes. Why should our military men now be reduced to saluting... Cadres. He doesn't even know how to appropriately, <laughs> appropriately respond. He's just bowing to everyone. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> this yeah. is the lawlessness that is happening in the UPND. Yeah, yeah. yeah so this show sounds like we don't like the UPND. It's because of their uh, shenanigans. Yeah. Uh, also, just to balance, every time we shoot PF, 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 we also need to show you that we shoot PN, UPN, <laughs> just so you can know that we we actually support Sean Tembo. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think I'll be supporting Sean Tembo very I think soon. one Sean. I just don't uh, agree with some of his insults, but... I know, he, yeah. he blatantly just insults on TV. Yeah, of course we should uh, be free sorry, to do that. Take that back. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, but don't get me wrong. I, I, I shouldn't have called him an idiot. <laughs> He's a fool. <laughs> yeah, don't get me wrong, people should be free to express themselves. Yeah. What we feel about how they express themselves, yeah, it's... Unless if they insult you directly, there are laws in which you can take them on. Yeah. 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 So it's okay. They should be speaking the way they want, but I'm not happy. I'm not happy with the way he speaks sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe we might just support Sean Tembo. We might just support Sean Tembo. So uh, we'll leave you guys with this video and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> That's the headmaster somewhere. Yeah.
Manis. Hey, like what you see? I know you do. Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao.